How does the short selling feature impact your margin? Let's start by walking through a scenario where you have a brand new account with $10,000. For any short sell order, the amount of margin required is equal to the money you receive from shorting the stock plus the margin requirement of that stock. Yeah, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Let's break this down. If you short $5,000 of stock, the $5,000 doesn't immediately become yours. In fact, the $5,000 acts as collateral against the shares that you borrowed, and it's held in escrow until you close your short position. You also wouldn't earn any interest on this cash. Even still, you need to put up some of your own capital as collateral as well. Remember that for most stocks that trade over $5, the margin requirement is typically 30% of the value. If this doesn't ring a bell, don't go any further. Check out our past video on margin calculations first. Back to our example. So, the margin required for the trade is $5,000 plus an additional 30% of the trade value, which in this case equals $6,500 plus commission. Since you receive $5,000 from the sale, the net impact to your available margin would be a decrease of $1,500. Assuming you started with an available margin of $10,000, this means your remaining margin will now be $8,500. Now let's see what happens to your margin if the stock price on your short position changes. To explain this, we're going to introduce a new term called mark to market. Mark to market is a daily adjustment that affects your margin excess or available margin based on the value of your short positions. If your short positions move up in value, meaning you're losing money on your trade, then the cash is moved from your long account to your short account. But if your short stock goes down in value, some of the cash that you can't touch in your short account is now moved to your long account. This is because less margin is now required. Let's build off our last example to explain. If the next day our stock drops 10%, then the margin required decreases to $5,850. Because of this $650 improvement on margin, you'll also see a mark-to-market -market adjustment moving from your short account to your long account. One thing to note is that there's a limit on how much you can short, just as there's a limit on how much you can buy with margin. Unlike a long margin account where the cap is based off of the amount you're borrowing, for a short account, the limit is based off of the market value of the stock that you're shorting. For example, a stock with 75% margin requirement only allows you to sell $50,000 worth of the stock. Any stock trading under $3 a share or that has 100% margin required can't be shorted. Check out the short concentration guidelines for details. Another important thing to go over is called dividend risk. Usually, when you buy a dividend paying stock and hold it up to or beyond its ex-dividend date, you receive a dividend payment. But if you short a company with a paying dividend, then that dividend belongs to the owner of the shares who loaned the original stock to you in the first place. This means you need to pay the dividend back to the shareholder when the dividend is paid. This is something that can catch many investors off guard. It can be surprising to see a dividend amount taken out of your account. So keep this in mind if you're looking to short a dividend paying stock. Finally, when you hold a stock long in your account, you can't short the same stock in your account until you've closed out your long position. For example, if you have 500 shares of ABC1 on the long side of your account, you're not able to short any shares of ABC1 until you sell that long position first. The reverse also applies if you're shorting a stock. If you're shorting 200 shares of ABC1, you can't go long on that stock until 200 shares are covered first. This practice is called shorting the box. Now you see how short selling can affect your margin account.